Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Deep Cuts, a channel dedicated to music for lovers of music. So this discussion topic actually came from me chatting to my man Kyle on Facebook who reached out to me not long ago via the uh, messenger chat and he was asking why I hadn't included ratings in my most recent album review roundup video, you know, especially as last year when I did reviews for albums like Nick Cave and the Bad Seed Skeleton Tree, Danny Brown Atrocity Exhibition, I did give numerical ratings. So he was asking, was there a specific reason that I hadn't included that in these reviews? Basically, we went on chatting for a good while about the topic and it made it fairly clear it would be a very ripe topic for discussion, so here we are. As a personal fan of the liberal arts, be that film, music, literature, visual arts, I have always in some way relied on critical ratings. You know, with the intense plethora of creativity out there in the world, how do you even begin to decide what you're gonna spend your time on without there being some kind of qualitative marker, be that perhaps numerical ratings, for example? I think it's key to remember the importance and impact that critical consensus and ratings have on a piece of art, because let's be honest, that's what shapes and forms the overall consensus around that piece of work. For example, let's say every single journal hub, newspaper, aggregate site gives the new Ryan Adams record a 10, <laughs> then you're probably more likely to check it out. But they also close off your view. For example, the new Wolfgang Tillmans exhibition at the Tate Modern in London. It's actually been getting very good reviews, but let's hypothetically imagine that every single newspaper under the sun not that sun, they don't review art. Um, every single newspaper under the sun is giving this exhibition a one star rating. I'll guarantee you that the, the, the attendance figures for that art exhibition will be significantly lower than if they were if the exhibition got given four or five star ratings across the board, obviously. Now you personally might have really enjoyed that exhibition. You might have found an individual piece of work inside there that offered up some kind of transcendental experience, but you don't know because you didn't go because those horrendous ratings put you off. Or hypothetically, if you did go, would you actually be able to put those ratings in the back of your mind and experience that work for what it is without that critical consensus changing your perception of the art itself? I mean, that's just how we're wired as humans. We rely on the opinions and experiences of other people in order to decide what to spend our time experiencing or doing. And I think it's foolish to say that you don't do that. I mean, I applaud someone that goes and listens to every single album that's released, regardless of critical opinion, regardless of consensus, and be able to experience it um, separately from that critical opinion. But that's the point. I don't think you actually can. I think even, sub even if it's just subconsciously, if you've seen one rating, good or bad, that has somehow formulated the way that you approach that piece of work. And it can even work retroactively. I mean, for example, I've, sometimes I've listened to a record before the critical reviews have come out. Maybe I quite enjoyed it. When the reviews finally do come out, I start reading through and thinking, I'm quite shocked because why has this been panned? And then I've, I've ended up going back and listening to the album more to try and decide exactly why the general consensus is that it's not a very good record when I got a lot of enjoyment out of it myself. So I think it really does impact the way that we listen to and approach music or art. Basically, the main point is, is that we are all affected by these ratings and these critical opinions and the opinions of others, regardless of whether we think we are or not. And this leads me on to why I haven't been rating the records I've reviewed this year. I think a lot of you come here regularly to be introduced to new music or to be challenged by something in music. And if that's the case, that's gonna be a much bigger part of this channel moving on forward into the next few years. The best way I can describe this decision is this. Imagine a record comes out in a month, which is full of four to five star records or 8.5s and above for you pitchforkers. And this album, although it's good, has only been getting a solid three star review consensus or, you know, seven out of 10 on average. Are you likely to listen to that album? If you only have a certain amount of time, you're probably gonna listen to those eight, nines, tens instead of that seven, because you know, seven beats eight and nine, right? I mean, that's the way the numerical framework works. So maybe you won't listen to that record now. As someone who is constantly reviewing music and recommending music to people all the time, I find that if I do a detailed analysis by, by placing that album into a numerical statistical framework, I'm cheapening the analysis of it because you're probably just gonna to go to the number at the end, aren't you? You're probably not gonna to listen to all of the little things that I've talked about because the overriding factor of this is its numerical placing in the ranking, which is the, the six, the seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever it is. Also think about these ratings in relation to individual pieces of work. Let's say this month I end up giving Sanford's process an eight 
but I also give Juju's Forget an 8 as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm having to qualitatively compare each album and decide if they both deserve this arbitrary numerical figure. Now, what is the relevance in comparing two albums that are so completely different from one another? What does that offer us in terms of deciding what we think of this music? Does that help make any relevant point or analysis? Now, not only am I comparing these two eights, but you also are as a listener. And by using that framework, I'm really encouraging you to use, you know, compare these two albums. Let's say last year I gave Swans a Glowing Man an eight. You're gonna think, oh, okay, in that case, the Glowing Man is as good as Process then. Well, well, maybe, but I mean, what's the relevance in even um, comparing those two records, those two very different kinds of music? It doesn't make any sense. You've got the numbers one to 10 and numbers one to five to try and describe the quality of an entire, entire world of music. There's so many different sounds there. How, how can we compare two completely different kinds of music and attempt to attribute them into some sort of qualitative framework? It just makes no sense. You know, I'm well aware of what a seven means in terms of a review. It means that you're probably not gonna check it out because there's other albums that are eights or nines, so that's not gonna come high up on your on your list of things to listen to if, if it's not a band you're particularly interested in anyway. But there might be really good things in that record. There might be fantastic tracks, but I've made the decision that it's maybe a good album, but not a great album. You know, whatever, whatever those words end up meaning in this general critical framework of things. Um, but you might be missing out on some really great music, but because of that seven, that's just gonna put you off from listening to it. And so then maybe I'll give it an eight just so you listen to it, even though it might not deserve an eight, but then what does deserving an eight mean? What does deserving a seven mean? It's so confusing, I'm gonna tear my hair out because it's just, it's just so stupid. It's nonsensical bullshit, really, in the grand scheme of things. And this is where the discussion starts, really. I completely understand the point of having a numerical framework, a structure for comparing things and deciding what you're gonna spend your time listening to or experiencing, but that framework is inherently flawed in its own system because we're arbitrarily comparing different pieces of work. And we're also perhaps missing out on pieces of work due to the fact that a number has been given by a group of people or one person, and that's then changed our view of how we approach that record or piece of, piece of art, or whether we actually approach that piece of art at all anyway. Obviously, this being a discussion video, I want to know what you guys think. I think there's a lot to discuss in here, and I feel like people, as music fans, because I'm the same as you guys, I feel like you'll be torn with this idea, because I'm the same as you, I'm sure I'll be the same as you guys. I completely get the point of it, but I'm also struggling with the concept of it. And I don't think, I think this is the reason I'm not including ratings in my reviews at the moment. I don't think I really want to include them. I know I'll still do albums of the year or you know, best of the year so far, um, to try and give it some sort of framework of what my favorite albums this year have been. But just to give things these numerical ratings, I just don't really feel like it's doing much in terms of an analysis. But I wanna hear what you guys think about this. So make sure you leave a comment down below so we can have a discussion. And I'll see you guys in the comments section to have that talk. See you soon.